Kentucky Senator Gerald Neal, who was born in 1945, was elected to represent the District 33 in Jefferson County. Uh, Senator Gerald Neal is the first African American man elected to the Kentucky State Senate. Uh, Georgia Montgomery Davis Powers was the first African American person and also the first woman elected to the Kentucky State Senate, where she has served for 21 years as a distinguished member of the state. Senate in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. When elected in 1967, she became the first person of color and the first person woman, uh, first woman <laughs> elected to Kentucky Senate, State Senate. Senator Neal was first elected in 1989 and has since been consecutively re-elected the last 23 years. This represents the second to the longest service of any African American member of the Kentucky General Assembly. He's been a strong voice for senior citizens, youth, and the disadvantaged and minorities, and a staunch supporter of education, health care, and penal code reform. He was born on September 22, 1945. He graduated from Kentucky State University in Frankfort, Kentucky in 1967 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in History and Political Science. In 1972, he received a Juris Doctor of Law degree from the University of Louisville Brandeis, Brandeis School of Law. He pursued Political Science graduate studies at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor from 1972 to 1973. Kentucky State University later bestowed upon him an honorary doctorate in Humane Letters. University of Louisville Brandeis School of Law named him a 2006 Distinguished Alumni Law Fellow. He currently serves as a senior fellow at the University of Louisville, where he teaches courses in history, politics, and public policy. Neal has been a practicing attorney with his own law firm, Gerald A. Neal & Associates, LLC, in Louisville since 1973. He has served as Vice President, Regional Director, and Parliamentarian of the National Bar Association and as President of the Kentucky Chapter of the National Bar Association. He is a member of the Kentucky Bar Association and is a Louisville and Kentucky Bar Association Fellow. As a community leader, he formerly served as Assistant Director of Public Health and Safety for the City of Louisville was a hearing officer for the State Workers' Compensation Board and worked as a juvenile probation officer. He served five terms as chair of the Louisville-Jefferson County Metropolitan Sewer District where he increased the transparency of the agency, opening it to public scrutiny and involvement. In the Kentucky Senate, he has sponsored legislation requiring school districts to focus on equal educational opportunities. He is the founder of the Kentucky Educational Reform African American and All Children's Caucuses or All Children's Caucus. He sponsored the law that created the K-CHIP program to provide health care coverage to more of Kentucky's uninsured children and expanded Medicaid coverage for children. He sponsored laws that required the identification of the special needs of the minority elderly population and created the African American Heritage Commission. He sponsored legislation amending the Kentucky Constitution to remove segregation by race, prohibit racial profiling by law enforcement, and prohibit the execution of a person when evidence shows racial bias in prosecution. In May 27, 2010, the Senate adopted Senator Neal's resolution reaffirming the principles of equality preserved in the U.S. Constitution, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and the Kentucky Civil Rights of 1966. The resolution states that the Senate recognizes the need for equality of all persons in the United States and in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the protection of that equality. Among his honors for distinguished service are the Clarence Mitchell Award and the Kentucky State Conference of NAACP branches for his support of civil rights legislation. The Anderson Laureate Award for his impact on his community, state, and nation. The 1998 Man of the Year from Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, Phi Bull Chapter. The 2001 Distinguished Citizen Award from Kappa Alpha PSI Fraternity Incorporated, the Georgia Davis Powers Humanitarian Award, the Public Advocate Award for passage of legislation to abolish racial profiling, the Kentucky Public Advocates Award for passage of the Racial Justice Act, and the Nelson Mandela Lifetime Achievement Award from the Kentucky Department of Public Advocacy. He served as a United Nations Observer and Monitor for the historic April 1994 all race elections in South Africa. So he monitored the elections in uh, South Africa in April 1994. He is a 2001 inductee of the Kentucky Civil Rights Hall of Fame. So that's his bio. Uh, Six 2006, Gerald Neal has been paid at least $672,000 for his part-time legal services to MSD, the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Sewer District 
So the Metropolitan Sewer District. Gerald Neal is also a former Metropolitan Sewer District board member, serving 11 years starting 1979, including five years as chairman. Uh, he made an average of $134,400 per year as a subcontractor for the Metropolitan Sewer District lawyer, Larry Zelke. Gerald Neal's dismissal came a day before Metropolitan Sewer District officials reported receiving a $1,938 reimbursement from Neal to cover part of the cost of a private retirement party in 2008 for Neal's wife, Kathy Cooksey, who is the agency's Human Resources Director. Gerald Neal acted as attorney to First American Municipals pursuant to some number of these contracts while also employed as legal counsel to Louisville Metropolitan Sewer District, a flagrant and illegal personal conflict of interest. The multiple frauds concurrent to Louisville's Metro Sewer District's investment contracts, which have been reported to the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigations, and the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, mandate their immediate termination and investigation under federal and state law. The full scope of these corrupt circumstances has already been exposed and revealed by Metropolitan Sewer District's own internal audits, yet no action had been taken to recover monies lost, and taxpayers continue to lose. Mayor Greg Fisher is the sole authority over the Metropolitan Sewer District and can order them to stop payment on these interest rate swap contracts immediately. Instead, he's been complicit in the cover-up that it has prevented this issue from coming to full light. Gerald Neal acted as attorney to First American Municipals pursuant to some number of these contracts while also employed as legal counsel to Louisville Metropolitan Sewer District, a flagrant and illegal personal conflict of interest. State Senator Gerald Neal was paid at least $672,000 um, $672, since 2006 for his legal services to the Metropolitan Sewer District. The agency spent at least $1,900 for a private retirement party for Neil's wife and finally outgoing Metropolitan Sewer District Executive Director Bud Chardine increased the salary of Neil's wife received by $27,580 over the last 22 months of her career. After his subcontract to perform legal work for the Metropolitan Sewer District was terminated, Neil was quoted as saying, I don't want anybody associating my name, rightly or wrongly, with the inappropriate use of funds. Well, too late, says a letter to the editor piece in the Courier Journal. Norris Shelton owns American Slaves Incorporated. Norris Shelton, born in 1937, American Slaves Incorporated founder and president Norris Shelton has lived his life in undeserved discrimination. As an independent entrepreneur, time and again, he has suffered the debilitating effects of prejudice and favoritism in the business world. Fortunately, he has learned to survive and he has many lessons to share. Recognizing and directly addressing the utter unfairness and personal interaction that permeates America and the negative effect bigotry has on all those sharing his dark skin but truly American-born heritage, Shelton set out to unravel the mystery of why his people have so long tolerated being treated with less dignity and respect when compared to other ethnic groups in our own country. The result is America's Little Black Book, the book he wrote. A discourse about the human beings who are bred in America to be slaves or abandonment, their continuing lack of leadership and investigation into the persistent after effects of slavery. His conclusions will surprise you in his just published book are observations about the collective birthright of an entire people and their need for self-realization and action. His fresh new thinking and prescription for change could well break the chain of ignorance as perpetually plagued his people and, as a result, paved the way toward a true racial relations breakthrough in America. In my climb from poverty to prosperity and personal success, I experienced an epiphany about our people's need for collective self-realization and action, said uh, Norris Shelton. Uh, to share what I've learned, I've chose to write America's Little Black Book because the birthright of an entire people, the descendants of American slaves, is at stake. American Slaves Incorporated is a 501c3 nonprofit Kentucky organization. Tax deductible contributions are appreciated. They have a PayPal account for anybody who wants to make donations. An article from, I'm not sure, uh, November 16, 2011, I think, American Slaves Incorporated. From praising God to selling booze, one man's unorthodox approach to seeking reparations for the descendants of slaves by Michael L. Jones. So it's an article by Michael L. Jones. 
On a sunny Saturday afternoon in early September, about two dozen worshipers clapped their hands and sang along with the choir at the First Church of American Slaves, a tiny building on the corner of Dr. W.J. Hodge and Jefferson Streets. Despite his provocative name, the service at the non-denominational church was not much different from any other African-American church in the area. The voices of the chosen few and all-male gospel quartet filled the chapel with Lord Show Me the Way in a style reminiscent of old doo-wop groups. But this was not just another worship service. It was a joining ceremony. The Body of Christ Fellowship Church was merging with the First Church of American Slaves, which was founded in July by a nonprofit called American Slaves Incorporated, ASI. The Body of Christ Church used to hold its services at Shiloh Baptist, uh, but in January 2011, Shiloh's pastor was sentenced to two years in prison for accepting kickbacks on a Department of Housing and Urban Development construction contract. Some Body of Christ members were uncomfortable being associated with a scandal, so they looked for a new home. After the singing, American Slaves Incorporated President and Founder Nora Shelton walked up to the lectern to welcome the, welcome the new members. Shelton, 74 years old, is tall and dark skinned with a white beard and an infectious laugh he's not shy about using. On this occasion, he's smiling ear to ear because the merger with Body of Christ is a milestone in what he refers to as the American Slave Movement. The movement is best exemplified by a particular poster hanging in the First Church of American Slaves. The poster includes an American flag and a photo of the slave Kunta Kinte, the main character from the Roots miniseries, and it reads, American born and bred and still searching for freedom. On one side of Kinte is a picture of the Founding Father signing the Declaration of Independence. On the other are the words slave, color, negro, black, and African American. ASI eschews the use of all those words to describe descendants of American slaves, the term they would like to become an official slave designation. So, they're not African Americans, but they're called descendants of American slaves. On several occasions, Shel Shelton corrects me by saying African Americans should only be applied to new immigrants to the country. He believes the term is too imprecise to describe the relationship between the United States of America and its natural-born, dark-skinned citizens who are the descendants of slaves. The S word is what it's all about, Shelton says. They can have all the African American programs they want. They can have all the black and minority programs they want. If it doesn't have descendants of American slaves in it, it doesn't mean nothing. American Slave Movement officially started in 2001 when Shelton Incorporated American Slaves Incorporated. The first church of American slaves had its first service on July 3rd, the movement's 10th anniversary. Shelton intends for the church to be a vehicle to carry his ideas to the Louisville community and ultimately the nation. The merger with the Body of Christ is an important step because the new congregation will expand ASI's reach into Louisville's black community. ASI doesn't keep membership roles because all descendants of American slaves are considered members. But until now, American Slave Incorporated biggest accomplishments have been a 2009 black leadership forum it's sponsored at the University of Louisville and a neighborhood cleanup with Operation Brightside. What you are witnessing here today is history being made, Shelton told the combined congregations at the September service. God directed us to merge church and state together so that we can continue our trek to freedom. Dr. Martin Luther King told us that our next fight would be on the economic battlefield. He was killed. Now we have to take up that cross. Go to the economic battlefield and merge church and state together so our people have strength to move forward. Nora Shelton is the most laid-back prophet you'll ever meet. He's also got a quick wit and knack for imagery. In a slight southern drawl, he'll tell you the U.S. government releasing emancipated slaves into a capitalist society without capitals like putting a baby in prison. And Sheldon will warn you that his autobiography, Alley Rat, is kind of raw. It's one of six books he has available